Let's start with the first item, which is a pair of shoes. Model is fine because the client says so, and because it looks more or less decent, I just don't really enjoy working with the high contrast images like this. Black things look too dark and it's a pain to fix because I can't do it in camera row without sacrificing the overall contrast. I'll select all the object images and set the exposure to minus 1. This is quite a lot, so in cases like this, I would tell the head of photographers about this issue. This is a serious overexposure problem. Overexposed items lack contrast, so as I have expected, lowering exposure is not enough. Black shoes look gray. Look at the histogram, there's a huge gap where the deep shadows should be, and there's no black point. When I want to increase contrast in the shadows, blacks is the slider to move. Other sliders will stretch the whole histogram, and this one will do what I need without making the whole thing much darker. I'll set it to 53, but it doesn't seem enough, so I'll also move the shadow slider and set it to minus 20. Some people advise pulling the sliders until you get clipping in the shadows, which means you set the black point and reach the full tonal range. But in my opinion, this is usually too much for catalog images, so normally I pull until I see a black point and then push a little bit back. Actually, when we're talking about the black point, it means that there's something black in the image. Either the object itself is black or it has some deep shadows. Otherwise, you can stretch the histogram so much. Same is true for the white point, but in catalog retouching, we don't get to see it very often because most images we work with are supposed to be isolated and the typical background is usually bright white to ease the process. If I switch the highlight clipping warning on, you'll see that the whole background is totally white. As for the white point on objects, it might hide in glares. Models are easier, the white point is usually in the eyes, it's the reflection of the studio light sources. But not in this particular case, because there are no faces in the images. Let's get back to our shoes then. When I work with contrast, I usually switch the highlights clipping off, because it's easy to get distracted by it. I'll switch to other angles of the same shoe and increase the blacks a little bit because they are darker and get clipped. You might ask, how do I know how much contrast is enough? The skill to determine when to stop is mostly experience-based. It means that if you are a beginner, you won't be able to see it so easily. I know a trick that might help. For the objects that are dark, or at least normal, I mean those where you can set the black point, you can open an image in Photoshop after correction and use the Auto Contrast command. It's easy to do if you press shift Control alt l If it changes the overall contrast a little bit or doesn't change it at all, you did well. If you see a drastic change, you've messed it up. Look at my pair of shoes. It's more or less the same when I switch between the before and the after images. But let's see what happens if I open the image with just the exposure slider adjusted and use the auto contrast. The change is drastic, it means there's not enough contrast at all. But please pay attention that this trick can only be used on black and dark things, it will not work on white items and items that should not have a black or white points. Let's get back to our shoes. Now when you look at the object and mono images, they're not much different anymore, which means we're done with them. Now I can just crop them if I want to and move on to the next item. Pay attention to the fact that I'm not trying to get a match between the model and the object images by measuring them with the eyedropper. It's not possible because they do not come from the same photography station, and even if they did, it would be pointless. The idea is not to make them the same by adjusting the numbers, the idea is to get the impression of the same shoes when you look at the different images. The object images are still a bit lighter than the model images, but the shoes do not look different when you switch between the images. This is quite sufficient, you don't need to waste your time by trying to get the exact match. The other set of images is different from what we've seen so far. The deal is that the mannequin image doesn't look much different from the model images, which is just great. It's just a bit darker, so I'll set the exposure to plus 0 0.35 and crop the images.
Now we are ready to open the mold in Photoshop and retouch. Let's deal with another batch of images and repeat the things I've told you already about exposure and contrast adjustment. Look at these shoes. There is no model to compare with, but I can immediately see that they are significantly overexposed. How do I know? First of all, we are dealing with the shoes that are dark red and black. I know the sole must be black, because there's a deep shadow right here. And it should be black anyway, but it's not, it looks grey. There's also a lot of white clipping around the object, which means there was a lot of light involved. All that tells me the image is overexposed and low contrast because of that. If I open an image like this and try to auto-contrast it, it will become much darker, because the algorithm will stretch the left part of the tonal range until the black point is set. But I don't trust the auto-contrast so much and I'm going to color correct on my own. In this case, setting the exposure to minus 1 and blacks to minus 28 will be enough to fix all the images at once. The more images you work on, the quicker you'll be able to determine if something is wrong with them. Especially if you work in one place. So, if you feel unsure about the whole situation, just practice and skill will come with experience. And the last batch of images for today will be a bunch of object photos. Once again, they are all from the same photo shoot, which is a good thing. As you can see, there is a lot of light involved, because the white background is heavily clipped. So, that means we've probably lost some contrast due to the overall overexposure. But how about the white balance? How can we determine if it's okay or not? In this case, it's not so easy. We don't have any models, just objects. We don't have a grey card either. So, the only thing we can use here is our own skills. When I look at the images, I get the impression that the white balance is a bit off. Not much, but still off. To see if I'm right, I'll set the saturation to plus 100 and the exposure to about minus 3. You can now see that most of the background is totally neutral, but there are bluish areas right below the object and around the edges. It might happen with the backgrounds made of plastic, like this one, that they catch parasitic tints from the environment be it colored walls behind the station or a photographer's colored t-shirt. The white balance was set correctly, otherwise the most of the background would have been tinted. This particular production uses neutral grey backgrounds for all the photo shoots, but the bluish tint is there and it's reflecting in the toe area of the shoe. To make sure I'm not wrong, I'll do the same on the next image as well, and yes, the tint is still present. It's not critical and I could just leave it as it is. But I will do a good thing and set the temperature to plus 5, shifting the white balance towards the yellow color range, which is the opposite of the blue. It's not enough to make anything yellow, but the tint is less visible now, while the object is neutral. This is better than bluish, so I'll apply the same setting on all the images, and we will move on to the exposure setting. When you have a lot of items, you can use the items that are black and white to set the exposure in contrast. Because with the black objects you can work on the leftmost part of the histogram, and vice versa with the white objects. We know that if an object is black, it will most probably have a black point somewhere in the shadows. So let's start with that. Keeping in mind that the whole photo shoot is very bright because it's supposed to be isolated, I'll lower the exposure straight away and set it to minus 0.40. Any more would be harmful for a JPEG. But with this we don't even need to reduce the highlights clipping. Then I'll use the second shoe, which is the darkest, as a reference, and start moving the black slider to the left. At minus 30 it gives off a shadow clipping warning, so I stop and push it a bit forward to minus 27. Now I can apply the setting to all the images. It will make the black objects reach the full tonal range, and the rest of the items will get enough contrast. You don't have to set the black point on all the images individually, as they all belong to the same photo shoot. And while the black objects should have a black point somewhere, it's not like that with the light colored objects. If I try and do the same on the white cap, I mean pulling the black slider to the left till a black point is set, it won't look so good. So, while it's okay to use the black items to set the black point for the whole photo shoot, it's not okay to use any other objects for the same matter. Now, if I wanted to check if there's enough contrast, I could open any black object in Photoshop and apply the auto-contrast command. 
Just as I said before, if it changes the contrast drastically, you've messed it up. If the change is not significant, you're fine. In this case, it's more or less fine. I'll set the shadow slider to minus 10, and that will be it for the contrast. Now, on to the exposure setting. Minus 0.40 seems like a good value for all the shoes and the belt as well, but the yellow bag is different. It looks dark, and there's almost no clipping on the background. Maybe one of the light sources didn't work as intended, but this image is definitely less exposed than the rest of them. So I'll increase the exposure till I hit plus 0.20, which seems like a good compromise between too dark and too bright. A couple of images after the bag look normal, but not the white cap. It's too dark. This is because the F number, which is the setting for the camera diaphragm size, is different. It was 10 to 11 on most images, but it is 14 on this particular image. The photographer closed the diaphragm a bit to avoid overexposure of this white object, but that means that the exposure setting on this image should be higher. I'll set it to zero because at this point, the lightest area on the cap doesn't get brighter than 245 on average in every channel. More than that, and it's overexposed. 